Those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Revelations continue to emerge every day from the massive trove of diplomatic cables being published by WikiLeaks in conjunction with newspapers around the world. The latest disclosures reveal U.S. officials tried to influence Spanish prosecutors and government officials to drop court investigations into torture at Guantanamo, CIA extraordinary rendition flights, and the 2003 killing of a Spanish journalist by U.S. U.S. troops in Iraq. Spanish prosecutors are coming under criticism for revelations that they shared information on cases they were involved in with U.S. officials. According to the leaked documents, U.S. officials were worried in particular about investigations pursued by the world-renowned Spanish judge Balthazar Garzón, whom U.S. officials described as having, quote, an anti-American streak. Garzón opened a case against six former Bush administration officials, including former Attorney General Alberto González for torture at the Guantanamo prison camp. Senator Mel Martinez and U.S. Embassy's charge d'affaire visited the Spanish foreign ministry to warn the Guantanamo investigation would have consequences. The cables say, quote, Martinez and the charge underscore that the prosecutions would have an enormous impact on the bilateral relationship. The U.S. ambassador to Spain, Eduardo Aguirre, was also pressuring the Spanish government to drop a precedent-setting case against former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. And U.S. officials were especially alarmed when prosecutors in Spain and Germany began comparing notes on their investigations into CIA extraordinary rendition flights. U.S. officials said, quote, this coordination among independent investigators will complicate our efforts to manage this case at a discrete government-to-government -government level. The investigation in Germany was in regard to the CIA abduction and rendition of German citizen Khaled al-Masri. He was wrongly abducted and flown to Afghanistan, where he was held for months without charge. When it looked like 13 CIA agents might be charged in the case, the U.S. Embassy in Berlin stepped in and, according to one leak cable, threatened, quote, that issuance of international arrest warrants would have a negative impact on our bilateral relationship. For more on all these revelations, I'm joined here in New York by Scott Horton. He's an attorney specializing in international law and human rights, and he's a contributing editor at Harper's Magazine, where he writes the blog No Comment. Let's start with Khaled al-Masri. Can you talk about his case? Explain exactly, remind people, because I think these names come and go, um, who he was, what happened to him. Well, Khalid al-Masri was a greengrocer from a small town in South Germany, and in uh, around New Year's 2003, he made a bus trip down to Macedonia after having a spat with his wife. He was apprehended by border agents there, and they noticed his passport, his name was almost, but for two letters, the same as one of the most wanted al-Qaeda uh, agents who had, in fact, been operating in uh, Germany, also named Khalid al-Masri. Uh, and they uh, brought this to the attention of the CIA. The CIA concluded very quickly that they had their man. Uh, they arrested him. Uh, and uh, after he was interrogated for a few days, he was shipped off uh, to uh, first to Baghdad and then to Afghanistan. Uh, he recounts he was beaten, he was shot up with drugs, uh, he was beaten repeatedly, and he was interrogated. Throughout, he insisted that, no, I'm a grocer from South Germany, and my passport's correct, and there's nothing wrong. Uh, well, after several months, the CIA concluded that, indeed, he was exactly who he said he was, not the person that they thought they had apprehended. Then. Uh, a controversy broke out within the CIA about what to do with him. A number of senior CIA officials evidently saying, this man knows too much. We can't turn him free. But evidently, Condoleezza Rice, in the end, intervened and ordered that he be released, and he was released. Now, the jet that flew him— uh, But for a period of time, the top officials knew they had the wrong man, and they kept him. For several months, they knew they had a completely innocent German citizen, and they continued to hold him. Uh, and indeed, uh, Condoleezza Rice at one point stated that she had ordered his release, and she checked back uh, more than a week later and found that he was still being held. And she said this was unacceptable. He had to be released. Now, the, the jet that flew him on this special rendition flight uh, uh, set out from Spain. 
uh, and Spanish authorities had collected information about it. So that's the, the basis of this concern, that there would be collaboration between criminal investigators in Spain and Germany, which in fact was going on. That was a matter of very, very acute concern uh, to U.S. diplomats. And I think in this case in Spain, this is a sensational matter in Spain right now. It's been the top of the news for three consecutive days now. Uh, and it's causing the Spaniards to question the independence of their prosecutorial service and their judiciary, because here's a foreign power using extraordinary means, things certainly that are not conventional diplomacy, uh, to affect the handling of a criminal case uh, and their system. They, we have U.S. diplomats trying to dictate which prosecutors are assigned, trying to assure which judge is assigned, uh, engaging in all sorts of, uh, uh, of conspiracies, really, with local officials trying to remove uh, the judge who's initially assigned, actually trying to remove several different judges. They go through the list of judges, and they pick the judges they think they want to handle the cases and the judges they want off. And, of course, Baltazar Garzón has become the target uh, of a, uh, of a judicial ethics complaint based on his handling of Franco-era cases, which they say are, were beyond his jurisdiction, it becomes clear from these cables uh, that Spanish authorities and U.S. diplomats uh, are uh, agreed to use this as a procedure to remove him from handling the Guantanamo torture cases, which is just astonishing. I mean, Eduardo Aguirre, the U.S. ambassador to Spain, who is a banker from Texas, a Cuban-American, <laughs> appointed by George W. George Bush. George Bush's plumber, he calls himself. That's right. He said, I am George Bush's plumber. I solve George's problems, he told El País, the Spanish newspaper. Um, he talked about him as anti-American as he takes on these cases. But Baltazar Garzón is known, for example, as the judge who was uh, responsible for getting Augusto Pinochet arrested in Britain and held under house arrest for about a year. I mean, he is known around the world as he takes on these cases, which particularly inspired fear well, in the uh, U.S. I government. Take the first charge of these anti-American uh, on. I mean, I think that's—I've known Garzón for quite some time. That's completely ridiculous. Uh, he's been a teacher at NYU Law School. Uh, he's here in the United States frequently. He's welcome as an honored guest at bar associations around the country. Uh, it's very clear that he was harshly critical of the Bush administration and the Bush administration's management of the war in Iraq, period. There's not a trace of anti-Americanism about him. But I think what we see going on here is a confusion of the policies and interests of the Republican Party and the Bush administration with those of the United States, and particularly Eduardo Aguirre really is viewing himself as someone who is there to fix problems that affect the Bush administration senior officials. And so he's particularly concerned when he sees that the Garzon torture investigation involves six senior judges, uh, six senior, rather, lawyers uh, of, uh, of the Bush administration, starting with Alberto Gonzalez, including David Addington, John Yu, uh, and several others. Uh, and he wants to bring an end to that immediately, and he's taking steps that are really not consistent with diplomacy to do so. And we see in these cables, he has been briefed in tremendous detail about everything that's going on in these courts, uh, which means uh, he has sources of information that uh, evidently include either judges or prosecutors or potentially both. Uh, and he's actively involved in strategies to shut down these investigations. Now, if that were going on in the United States right now, a foreign ambassador were doing such thing, the foreign ambassador would probably, in short order, be invited to leave. And what's causing such a crisis in Spain is that the top U.S., uh, the top Spanish officials, like the attorney general, the top prosecutors, are meeting with one U.S. government official after another, assuring them that they can probably table these cases from Guantanamo torture uh, to others. That, that's exactly right. I mean, particularly Spain's uh, attorney general, uh, Conde Pompido. Uh, clearly, deeply involved himself personally, that, that appears, and is repeatedly giving promises to the U.S. government that he's going to act basically not as Spain's attorney general, but as the U.S.'s attorney general, and bringing an end to these cases. Uh, we also have some information that suggests pretty strongly that the prosecutors who are attached to uh, the National Security Court, the Audiencia Nacional, supported uh, the investigation into Guantanamo torture, were prepared to go along with it until a political order came from the top of the administration to reverse course and oppose it. So there was direct
direct political manipulation of these cases. Uh, now, of course, the United States goes around the world talking about the importance of independent judges and independent uh, uh, criminal justice process and the importance of keeping politics out. And here we see really direct evidence of uh, really quite crude political manipulation of criminal proceedings by the United States. We're going to go to a break and then come back. We're speaking with Scott Horton, attorney specializing in international law and human rights, contributing editor at Harper, as he writes the blog, No Comment. And then we're going to be going to Madrid and speaking with the brother of the Spanish journalist, Jose Coso, who was killed April 8, 2003, when a U.S. tank shelled the Palestine Hotel, where hundreds of unembedded journalists were staying. They killed two reporters, Jose Coso of Telecinco and Taras Pratsyuk of Reuters, also a cameraman. This is Democracy Now! Stay with us.